pretty pretty. Come along. Hey, hey, garden gals and guys, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden, and I am thrilled to be bringing you this video. I'm finally getting around to sewing my snapdragons for the 2024 cut flower season. If you're new here, I am Steph. I am a home gardener in zone 5B slash 6A in the Chicago suburbs. Today I am trying a new soil blocking recipe by Brie from Blossom and Branch Farms. If you haven't watched her videos, they're really informative and helpful. And I am using a soil that she tested and had the best results yet out of several different combinations of soil blocking recipes. So I'm thrilled to use this today. I did use something very similar last year. And the thing that this has in it is Coco Loco potting mix as well as wool pellets. Now the wool pellets might seem like a curveball if you haven't read a lot into it, but this is almost like a natural fertilizer. It has a lot of nutrients in it. So she doesn't even fertilize her seedlings through the season, which for me, one last step, yes, thank you very much, I'll take it. The only thing I'm doing different this year is using a food processor to actually, whoa, to actually blend up the wool pellets with a little bit of water. She added that little key in this year and I think it'll be better because last year I found some of the wool clumps were kind of clumpy and big, but with blending them down, genius. They'll be even more mixed into the mixture. I just got this at Goodwill. You can see the sticker is still on it because I don't want to use my regular food stuff for it, even though it'd probably be fine, but five bucks at Goodwill, there's your tip. So I'm gonna go over the specifics of that recipe in a second. First, I wanted to talk about my snapdragons. I had great luck with them last year in soil blocking. Let's talk about my snapdragons. Last year, I sewed them on February 20th, and then I did another round on February 27th. They did beautifully for me. They were so nice and healthy. I actually used the same tray last year. I'm gonna use this again. I'm also gonna use one of these plastics trays that I got on Amazon. And then I'm gonna try and use this, which is a Goodwill find. The edge of it is a little steep. I'd like it a little lower but I'm gonna use this last because it's my least preferable. Now, February 20th and February 27th last year were respectively 10 weeks out from my last frost and nine weeks out from my last frost. With snapdragons, you can plant them anytime between eight to 10 weeks before your last frost is recommended. This year, because I'm prego with twins, I'm just a little bit behind on everything which is okay, because with soil blocking, I think things tend to grow a little faster anyways. So today is March 3rd, which is when I am sowing them. And for me, that is seven and a half weeks out from my last frost date of April 25th. Last year, I planted these out into my raised bed cut flower garden on April 12th, and they did a beautiful job last year. No complaints. The only thing I might do is add some Portanova netting to help keep the stems upright because sometimes they would flop a little bit. But other than that, I had really healthy seedlings, great season, beautiful bouquets. Snapdragons is a must for me for growing. So with snapdragons, know that they can handle a light frost. You'll likely plant them out before your last frost date. April 12th for me last year was three weeks before my last frost date, and they did great. I don't even remember covering them once. If I did, I covered them with a light frost cloth, easy peasy, and they were good to go. Now I'm growing a ton this year. So let me quickly go over the varieties with you so you can see what kind of color and show I'm gonna have this year and then we'll get to making our soil recipe and blocking these soil blocks out and planting. First I have Madame Butterfly Bronze from Floret. The Madame variety is beautiful. It's got those more roughly petals. I think Madame might be my favorite variety. Madame Butterfly Cherry Bronze, which is a new one for me from Johnny's. We have Madame Butterfly Red. I've grown this since the first year I've grown Snapdragons and I love them. Such a deep velvety red. And a new one, Madame Butterfly Ivory. 
Then my last floret one, I have Chantilly Light Pink. Now the Chantilly is not as ruffly as Madame and not as dragon mouth-like as your regular Snapdragons. Then the rest of these are all from Johnny. Some more Chantilly. I have Chantilly Bronze. Then we get into some of my favorites. Oh, are these my favorite? Costa Apricot. The most beautiful cream, slight pink, and a tinge of yellow. Absolutely stunning in bouquets. Gorgeous in the garden. Love, love, love. That's my number one favorite. I've got two packs of those. Potomac Apple Blossom. This is a close second, I would say. Almost the same as Costa Apricot, except take away that slight hinge of yellow, and it's the most beautiful brush of pink. Then we have Costa Velvet, which is a new one for me. We'll see how she shines. Costa Mildly White, also new for me. Potomac Orange, I grew this last year. I did enjoy it and I am not an orange girl, but I think it's got just enough play with some pink vibes in there that it's a stunning Snapdragon. And Monaco Orange, also a new one for me. This one I thought looked really beautiful from the picture, so we'll see how it turns out. 13, 14. Well, she likes her Snapdragons, doesn't she? I've got 14 packs to sew, so we're gonna get going here. First thing I need to do is mix up my soil recipe, which again is Breeze from Blossom Ranch Farm. I'll link her video down below about actually using this recipe as well as the experiment where she explains her results with a bunch of different soil recipes. I highly recommend watching it because I found it incredibly informative. So I'll link that in the description below. We're gonna go outside to do this because I do this in my kitchen. So all I'm using out there is a big tub to mix the soil in, my Coco Loco mix, a pitcher of water, and my wool pellets. So I'll show you all the steps that I'm gonna do right now. Okay, I'm in my garage where I'm gonna mix part of this soil mixture up. I've got my measuring cup. I'm just using a plastic cup. A mixing spatula, if you will. I forget the real terminology of what this tool is. So the soil recipe is three parts Coco Loco potting mix. I'm going to use this as my measuring unit. Like I said, you can use anything to measure. Just know that a part is a part is a part. So three parts Coco Loco potting mix to half a part or half a cup in my case of the wool pellets mixed up in a food processor with a little bit of water. So what I'm going to do is six total of these, six cups in here, and then one part, one of these cups of the wool pellets. Make sense? So here we go. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Now let's go ahead and stir a lot of water in here because with soil blocking, we want it to be pretty watery. Use this tool to turn it around and mix. Now, if you can't get your hands on Coco Loco, which I just order on Amazon, because I haven't found it at my local garden centers. You could probably also use Vermont Compost Company, which I have used before and had good results with, or ProMix I've also had pretty good results with. Now that being said, I haven't used either of those with the wool pellets, and I'm just going off of her exact recipe because she's had so much good luck with it. But if you're in a pinch, and if I was in a pinch, I would try subbing either of those two soils in. Now when we pull across the soil, we wanna be able to see some water streaming behind, so I'm gonna add a little more. It's probably going to be more wet than you would think you'd like it. Once we add the wool pellets in, we'll check the moisture level again. If we need to add more water, we can. Now when I pull, there's some water streaming behind, so that's what I want. So let's take this inside and get our wool pellets going. Okay, I've gotta do this part down here because my cord's not big enough on this food processor to reach to the table. So I've got my wool pellets. These I also order on 
Amazon. They come in a little baggie like this. They can be a little more expensive. So if you want to try something that's not quite as expensive, but that she still had good results with, she recommends Mycorrhiza in little packets. So you've got a couple options there. So we need one full part or one cup. And fair warning, they're a bit stinky. Just go with it. So you can see what they look like. They're just little wool pellets, just like that. And these, as they expand with the water, will get bigger. That's gonna do it for my, oh my, for my bag here. 902 acts like a natural fertilizer. So I've got my full cup. Gonna add some water in there. Pour it in my food processor. This is my first time I'm using this. How exciting. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's start this baby up. And we're not working. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Oh, I think we're gonna keep it on high. Low, high. Come on, baby, come on, baby. They're quite thick, so it's giving this food processor a run for its money, but I think it's working. Here we go, here we go. Oh. It gets stuck here, but I keep trying. I maybe should have done this in two sets. Oh my, my. Stephanie, you are a mess. You're welcome for trialing and airing this at home. <laughs> uh, so note, probably do this in two batches instead of filling it to the top. Let's try this again. Okay, much better. The pulsing several times seems to work best with, of course, half as much as I started with. Oh my gosh, we're smoking. Okay, okay. The machine is smoking, I'm gonna stop. We're good, we're good. Unplug it, unplug it. Okay, we're good. Let's just, let's move along now, shall we? Okay, so I've got half of this cup in here and it has now expanded after I used the food processor on it. So when I fill up my part, it should come all the way to the top. And it sure does. Note to self, the wool expands. Don't overstuff your food processor. Everything's fine, the food processor is cooling outside. Okay, so I'm gonna add my one part of wool pellets in here. On all of it, great. Add my spatula. And let's integrate it all together. My leftover wool pellets, I just put back in this bag here. I can use them when I do more seeds. They'll be fine to use then. And I think we're gonna have to put more water in because when I drive it across, there's no water really streaking. So you can see how it's pretty wet here. That's what we want. Couple more turns. And I can tell the food processor does make a difference because I'm not seeing those big wool pellet clumps. It's just all integrated together. And then when I pull across, now you can see some water is left behind. That is what we want. Now I'll show you how I'm actually gonna make my soil block with this mixture. This I got from the Gardener's Workshop. It is the smallest one and I find it works well for pretty much everything. Now this is important because you want the right consistency of your soil with water to make a nice healthy soil block. So I'm just going back and forth and then rubbing across the bottom to make sure that water is streaking like it is. And then what I'll do is take a chopstick or your scraper, either one will work and crumb across, let's try this, and just go nice and flat, get the sides, 
and that's ready to go. Now when I come to my actual tray, I'm gonna space it so that I have lanes in between my soil blocks so the water can go to the sides of all of the blocks. So we'll start here. When I press down, I wanna see some water coming out of the bottom. There it is. And that's a good soil block. Side note, this red plastic we put on there, it doesn't come like that. Maybe they have them now, but I'll link that video below. Leave some space, press down, water comes at the bottom. Excellent. The one step she does that I skip is she will sift her soil, Coco Loco, with a sifter before she puts it in her tub to mix. Honestly, I'm just being lazy and skip that step and I don't have a sifter. And I've had good luck last year and this year with that, but absolutely sift your heart out if you'd like to. Okay, the first tray is done. I ran out of room. I should have started these a little farther over, but these will still be okay. Let's keep going. Mama's hot. Mama is hot. Okay, so I've got 14 blocks out. I've gotta run and get my son, but then I'll come back and we'll start sewing. And then if I need to push some more blocks out, which I think I do, I will. See you back in a second. What, honey? I have to take a break. You have to take a break? Yeah. From sleeping? Yeah. I want. I know, I'm just helping. See, see that one right there? I need a break for snacking. You need a break? Okay, you can say hi, say hello. Hello. So first thing I'm going to do is label what each soil block is so I can keep track of the varieties. So I'm using a garden marker, which won't fall off, and painter's tape. So there we've got the variety name written down and the date that I'm sewing them. Sometimes I'll also put the company just so I can see how different companies do during the actual growing process. Someone's taking a bathroom break, so I'm gonna try and get all the important info out to you now. Snapdragons need light to germinate. So as I am sewing these, I'm gently taking a toothpick or a chopstick. I use chopsticks. Lick the end once so it's sticky. The seed will pick up, and then I'm gently just rubbing off on the top of the soil. And that is it. I'm not covering them. I'm not pushing them down. I will do a light layer of vermiculite at the end, but that's it because they need light to germinate. The germination takes about 7 to 14 days at 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Some people use a heat mat, some people don't. I am probably going to, and I've had good luck with using a heat mat in the past for germination. Somebody's back. <laughs> I will cover them with some plastic wrap to act as a humidity dome. And then when 50% or more of them have germinated, I'll take that off. Sorry, I just coughed. It's okay. Just say, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, are you okay? That was a big cough. Sure was. Now, Johnny Seed Packets say after these grow on and have three to five true leaves, they prefer to grow at 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit nights and about 60 degree Fahrenheit days. So I can always move these to my cold frame, which is outside and grow them on there. Or I can grow them on in my basement, which stays around 66. At that time, I can also come in and pinch them. First true leaf starts above that here. So this is one set here, second set of true leaves, third set of true leaves, fourth set. So that's good enough for me. I'm gonna come in and cut right there, which essentially means cutting off or pinching half the stem and then they will create more branches for more blooms as they grow. So I think that's all the really important info about sewing snaps and I'm just gonna come in here and try and bang as many out as I can. So I'll give you an up close look first. So I'm gonna come in, grab a seedling. You can see I might have two on the end, that's okay lightly brush off on the surface and move to the next one. That one has a lot more than two, but we're rolling with it. Any extras that come up in the soil block, I can just pinch off and then allow one plant to grow for a nice healthy plant. So Johnny's Seeds has 50 seeds in them. The soil blocker is 20 blocks, so usually it takes me 
two blocks to get through one variety. I try to keep all my varieties that are similar together. So the Madame variety, for instance, I'm gonna do all those within the same tray. It just helps me stay a little more organized. So I'm gonna keep going through these soil blocks and sewing all of these, and then I'll meet you back here and show you how I'm putting on these humidity domes and putting them under my lights. Okay, I just fell and my foot is pounding. My tummy is okay, don't worry. Briggs, please don't touch the camera. And I got all of them planted, very last steps, because my foot is pounding. Oh my gosh, we're gonna make it through this video. Taking my spray bottle and spraying these lightly on top. Briggs, please so that they're settled in. Oh my god. Just like that. With everything that happened, I forgot to put the vermiculite on, but you'll want to put vermiculite on now. And then for the humidity domes, taking clear plastic wrap and getting just enough to cover all of the blocks to where the plastic wrap is taut and that will help keep some humidity in there for them to germinate. Like I said, when about 50% of them are showing signs of germinating or grain poking up, I'll take the humidity dome off. I'll do the same thing to that tray and then I'll put them under my grow light, which is off right now so it's really dark so you can't see it. I'll show you tomorrow where they've landed. That grow light stays on 16 hours a day and then turns off automatically. It's set on a timer. So they'll get 16 hours of light and then a break at night. Here's how they are looking under the lights. And you can see I switched out the plastic wrap for these domes because it just seemed like it was getting too hot with the plastic wrap. I took the plastic wrap off and steam came out. So I switched that up. If we take this off, here's how we're looking and I'm ready to water. I also have not put vermiculite on yet because I ended up spraining my ankle and I just completely forgot. So I'm gonna add that now as well. Okay, they've got vermiculite on top now and they've just been watered and drained. So now they'll go back under the lights with the humidity domes on the heat mats. Otherwise, that is it. We are done. Thank you for hanging in there with this video. Please comment below if you have any questions and let me know your favorite Snapdragon varieties. We'll see you in the next one, everyone. Hang in there. Happy planting. Bye.